Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 346 of the All Dolphins podcast. And I am joined today by a former co-host of the All Dolphins podcast, now a columnist for the Miami Herald, the one, the only. Thank goodness there's only one. Kidding. I got kids. Omar Kelly, how are you, Omar? I'm good, man. How you been? I'm lying, uh, but I'm all right. I'm alive. Okay. Good. Well, but... I, I've been, I've been, I've been okay too. Certainly, certainly not doing as well as Mike McDaniel, who got himself a nice contract extension on this Friday morning. And obviously, we're going to devote a good portion of this episode discussing that extension. First, let me ask you, Omar, your initial reaction when the news broke on Friday morning. Not really surprised. Um, okay. uh, I know Steve Ross is gleefully happy with Mike. Um, and and for all the years that I've known Steve Ross, all he's ever wanted was obviously wins, a championship, being first in class. But he also wants a sexy offense and a sexy product. And Tua and Mike McDaniel and Tyreek, they all give him a sexy product, probably the sexiest product in the NFL with the exception of the Kansas City Chiefs. You got any other sexier products? No, no. Once you added the Kansas City Chiefs, I was like, Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you could be the Kansas City Chiefs, you want to be the Kansas City Chiefs. But I I know this for a fact because I did the the pregame show with WQAM um, all last year. All of these networks before games, because we had all of them on TV, they'd spend 30 minutes of every hour talking about the Miami Dolphins. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, the, and and you know how these networks work. They work on what draws ratings, what draws conversations, what do people want to hear about, what do people want to see. That's all these networks do. So if for 30 minutes of a show you want to talk about the Miami Dolphins and what their celebrations are and how the, the cheat motion works and what's the latest on Tyreek and, you know, is to a elite core, that's all Steve Ross wants. He wants to be talked about. He wants his product to be talked about. And so as long relevant. as Mike is relevant, exactly. He wants to be relevant in the conversation. Mm-hmm. And Mike delivers that. Oh, completely agree. I actually you know what I think I think about it. I'm gonna backtrack and reverse my, my position here. If we're talking pure sexiness, I think the Dolphins actually have the most sexy offense in the NFL. It's not the best because again, it hasn't raised up at key moments, but it's the sexiest because what they, for example, what they did against Denver last year, that was like yeah. un, unseen. I mean, it, yeah, it had been done before one time, like many moons ago, but Mike, the merciful. Mike, Mike, the merciful. Well, yeah. Merciful at the end after calling a double move by Robbie chosen in the fourth quarter. Hey man, Robbie chosen got to eat, eat, man. Robbie, Robbie got to eat. Robbie got to eat. Mike White got to eat. That one pass keeps Mike White in the league. Like, think about it. We're going to talk about Mike White a little bit later. My Here's my thing is, and you and you make a great point, that that's the main reason for this move is the Dolphins are relevant, they're fun, they're talked about, and they're good. This is where some people, pundits or fans would say, yeah, they're good, but they haven't been – have they been great? Have they even won a playoff game? The answer is no. Don't talk about Kirk like that. <laughs> Well, I, I'm kind of semi like you're in the same yeah, same boat. I mean, okay, they're not they're not great. They haven't like and I and I say this, I don't know if I had this conversation with you. Maybe I did, privately or publicly. Okay, name me the quarterback that is going to beat um Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, and Patrick Mahomes in three consecutive weeks. Name me the quarterback. First, well, first of all, I didn't know this was a Tua conversation, but we'll talk about Tua a little bit later because we always got to talk about Tua. Uh, but how about we start with one playoff win? Yeah, or even, no, or even... I, I don't disagree with you, and, okay. and I'm not one. I'm not one of those people where it's like where it says, "Oh, playoff winner of the season's an absolute failure." I'm I'm not that dude. I think, and, I, and I'm not that dude either. But it's some sort of progress towards that. Yeah. The bar, the bar for me is 10 wins. If it's not 10 wins, then something has to drastically go wrong. And it could be injuries because Lord knows they're the oldest team in, in the league or or close to it. I haven't done the math, but they're old yeah. as hell. Yeah. Old and fragile. Um, so and you know you know how that happened, how how the NFL it's like 
I, I can't imagine. I can't. This week, I've heard the NFL's 100% injury rate about four times this week. And that's from Dolphins players and coaches. Like, yeah. It, it's all gonna happen. So what happens when you lose three starters to injury by week four? Then what? We'll, we'll, we'll see. So I can't really. And you don't know which three starters it's going to be, but you know it's going to be three starters. So we'll, we'll figure that out as we go and figure out how they are from a depth standpoint. But to me, it's about being relevant. They're in the hunt. They are one of, as Teron Armstead says, 12 teams that legitimately, realistically begin the season with a chance of winning the Super Bowl. And how things bounce from there is going to dictate that. And that's why Mike got the extension. I'm, I'm pretty sure Chris Greer's had an extension already. Um, it's just not public knowledge, but oh, you know, probably because there, there's a whole lot. I mean, the whole, the whole, the whole front office is all. Here we now I got the hearts going. The whole front office, a whole lot of kumbaya. But my, my, see, you can't do it. Come on, <laughs> and you, and you are on the MacBook Pro, right? I'll talk to it's because I've got black fingers. That's all it is. That's you know what it that's, is. That's, wow. Okay. Uh, my reaction, I'll be honest with you, was it's kind of the same as it was with, and and I'm on record as having said. I would have waited with Tua. Okay, that that ship has sailed as Omar rolls his eyes. Oh, I've missed your rolling eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you you probably would have waited on Tyreek too. Yeah, like it's it's. Well, they didn't do anything to Tyreek other than guarantee his money. So that's that's a different thing. But with with, I mean, McDaniel was signed through twenty twenty five. Again, what's the hurry? He's not going anywhere for another two years. Um. And there's something. This is this is no statement on Mike McDaniel. First of all, got, has gotten the best out of Tua. Has made, as you mentioned, made the Dolphin offense exciting. Has made the team relevant and all of that. But the bottom line is the bottom line. And so now, if we if there's no playoff win in the next two years, he will have been a head coach for four years, no playoff win, and now you got him under contract for three more years. Well, no, I mean. I, I understand. Win, a play, okay, a playoff win is isn't the end all be all because what's supposed the Dolphins get to the playoffs this year and then they face Patrick Mahomes again in the first round in Kansas City? Like, what do you well, want? Then, then do you don't mean? say. Then don't. If, if that's the case, then don't say your goal is to win the Super Bowl. Because I, I mean, yeah, I, you can't beat Patrick Mahomes on a. You, maybe you could beat him on a neutral field. You can't beat him on his turf. In 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 in, in you, the moon, stars, and mountains must align for that to happen. And I don't think it's just the Dolphins. I think it's everybody in NFL. Like, who's beating Patrick Mahomes? Oh, well, I mean, time, time. First of all, yes, I'm going to go there. If the Buffalo Bills have any sort of half a brain for the third last 13 seconds at Arrowhead, no less, in 2021, they win that game. Can we agree on that? I don't even remember that game. I, it, was that the one that was the most exciting game in NFL history? It's up there. Um, 13 yeah, I, seconds. Yeah. They, they allowed Kansas City to gain it was like 45 yards in two plays to set themselves up for a field goal to tie the game and send it to overtime. I mean, talk about Kansas Brandon starting, starting with a – sorry? Kansas City's really good. Is that Tyreek was on that field, right? Tyreek caught that slant, caught that uh, crossing route and then he took was, it upfield, right? No, it was, I think it was Kelsey who caught the two passes to get him. It may have been Tyreek and Kelsey. I know Kelsey had one of them. But yeah. the problem is, is Buff was playing stupidly soft on defense number one. This is after – kicking to the end zone for a touchback instead of a dribbler to eat up some of those 13 seconds. Anyway, so my whole point here is this notion that Patrick Mahomes is there as long as he's playing, nobody's beating Kansas City. I mean, really? Lamar, Lamar can. Lamar and Derrick Henry can. But I think that's the superpowers are just becoming, gaining more power. And, and that's why Kansas City had to go out and they had to fortify their offensive line. They had to add new receivers. I mean – this is what's what, it's an arms race right now in the AFC. Like, uh, I, I think there are four or five teams in the AFC that are superpowers, and then in the NFC, there's what 49ers, like okay. Detroit, Detroit, but I, 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 not a superpower. I think they're overhyped. I do, they're good. They're, they're good. I, I, my only, my only concern with, with, with the Lions is I'm not a huge Jared Goff guy, but uh, I mean, that, that yeah. the rest of that offense, whew, that's pretty damn good. Um, so anyway, my whole thing is again, what was it? He was under contract for the next two years. It's not as if he's going into his last year. I, I don't, I don't understand the, the rush, but Hey, 
again, nothing against Mike McDaniel. He's done a hell of a job. You um, never want to go into last year of your contract when you that that's correct. Then yep. then give him the extension before next season. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. I I don't I I don't care one way or the other. Uh, it, it's it. Let's not let's not pretend that Steve Ross hasn't given guys extensions and then fired them the very same year. Because funny, it's, you it's should bring, funny you should bring that up because it, it's happened not once but twice. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's happened twice. Like twenty four so, hours with Drew Philbin. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I, I like people are like, oh well, what are they doing or what, like. An extension doesn't mean a thing. Hell, they gave, they, gave, they, gave, they gave Brian Flores a five-year fully guaranteed contract and then found a way to avoid paying him his money. Like, it's, you know, these con Which NFL was contracts are was unusual. It is. Because it is. the normal contract for a head coach was four years, and they gave Flores five years. Um, five, years five years fully guaranteed, too. But, correct. yes, it's it's – I, I don't NFL contracts, no matter what they are, they aren't worth the paper that they're written on. So I don't I don't take them at all as face value. So I don't care that Mike McDaniel got an extension. It doesn't mean he can't be fired at the end of the season. So I, I no, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh but clearly this shows the Dolphins are completely all in at the, at the very Maybe. least symbolic symbolically with their when, whole thing. When they, did, when they did an extension for Sperano and Philbin, were they all in? No, no, but it was. It's not just McDaniel. It's also Tua, Tyreek, Waddle, who also got big contracts. And those oh, are the, I, those are your. I, I back off. I back off that this team is all in right now. And here's the reason why I back no, off. No, hold on, hold on. I'm talking about they're all in with the, the, the nucleus and the foundation oh. of their team being that that circus offense with the track speed. Absolutely, but I, 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 I'm not a big believer in that they're all in on this season like they were last season. Because look at that offensive line. Look at that defensive line. Does that look like all in to you? Does that look that looks like eh, we'll figure it out. You're like, a lot more worried about the in. offensive line than they are. Huh? You're a lot more what? worried about the offensive line than they are. He had the nerve, the absolute <laughs> nerve, the goal to <laughs> mock us. And I know it to mock me about mocking him about, about it like. The arrogance of this, like right now, your whole mm -hmm. season, and, and hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Right now, go ahead, go ahead. the entire season is banking on Liam Eichenberg and the health of a 37-year-old defensive lineman in Calais Campbell. This is your entire, like those two go down or aren't good, like your season goes down the pooper. And – you're just like, yeah, you're worried about it more than I am. Like, does that make you comfortable? Like, are you are you willing to put the season in Liam Eichenberg's hands? Is it is, is that is that a comfortable place for you? We love Liam, but how is it any different than last year? He wasn't a starter last year. He he he, he eventually became a starter because of injury, but he had gotten beaten out. He had lost his confidence. He had gotten injured. Like, okay, let's just say, let's just say in a dream world, Isaiah Wynn miraculously becomes healthy in the next four weeks. He fills in at left guard, is wonderful, phenomenal. And then Robert Ro Robert Jones goes to right guard. Okay, are you comfortable with the season being in Robert Jones's hands? And I get it. Tua says, ah, I don't worry about them. I get the ball out of my hand really quickly. Like, okay, does that make it all right? Like, here's the problem with Tua's statement and the problem with Chris Greer's mentality that, oh, you know, just like Adam Gates once told us, we can find a guard at Publix. Uh, like, the problem with that is on mm -hmm. third and eight, when you're trailing by four with five minutes left, and people have pinned their ears back and they are hunting your quarterback and they have given taken away everything except a 15 yard out and he needs time for his receivers to get open what are you going to do when liam eichenberg or robert jones or lester cotton is on his behind and I, and that pass rusher is coming right into his face what are you going to do? 
because in those moments, that's when he fails. And you know what's always leaking in those moments? Those guards. Sometimes what you're gonna do? Time. What you're gonna do when they come for you? Um, no, and 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 this is a point I made. Two is right. He's get, gets rid of the ball quickly, and it won't matter for a lot of the games on the regular season schedule. But there are some games where having a less than ideal interior offensive line is going to matter. And this is where the Dolphins have come up short. And this is where I just hold on one quick second. I, to me, I see the same team as I saw last year until proven otherwise. And it's like, are they going to go a step beyond what they did last year? Uh, no, John Smith, they're not the same team. They got John Smith. Okay. That That's yeah. it. Fair. No, no, that's that's fair. That's that's and they got addition. a lot of more they got a lot more dogs and alphas, which is mm. interesting. Will it work? I don't know. Like Jordan Poyer is a dog. Sure. And Lance Campbell is a dog. Sure. Now, not you that Christian, Christian Wilkins wasn't a dog. Because he that's, wasn't. That's he what? He was a Christian dog. I said he was a dog. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I thought you said he wasn't. So that's two in, one out. Okay. There's more. Um, let me think I, about this roster. Um, there's got to be more. O, OBJ is a dog, if he could ever be healthy. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, Pup OBJ is, I mean, he can. Yeah. So um, I, I just, I feel like, you know, I have, I have, I don't know what the season is going to bring. Um, I know it's going to bring injuries. And hopefully it brings uh, injuries that don't decimate the team and don't mm -hmm. decimate the talent around them. I think there are very few spots where they can not withstand injuries. And as long as those spots are all right, they'll be all right. Now, <clears throat> you know, if, if they'll like tackle, they're good at tackle. They sustain some injuries. I think they're good. Um, inside linebacker. I think they've got one extra guy. They can they can survive an injury. Safety, they got one extra guy. They can survive an injury. Yeah, Marcus May. Come on. Marcus I know who Marcus May is. I know. I, I know. I'm, I'm like just thinking, just because I'm making funky eyes, I mean, I'm cornerback. Like, with you, I, I, where? Cornerback. Can they sustain an injury? No. Okay. To one of the um, starters. Sorry, I'm, I'm not ready to to crown. Ethan Botter, no matter how much Joe Shad would like us to do it, not yet. And then who's the other one? Cam Smith's on IR. It's around Neil's a special teams dude and Storm Duck. Storm Duck. Well, they, they make they make undrafted guys stars, or or you know they they'll be all right. They 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 they, they, they can find they can find an undrafted cornerback better than they can draft a cornerback. Better than they Tell can draft a, better than they can draft a guard. How's that? Oh, they can't draft a guard. Um, Point. they drafted a tackle and turned him into a guard and Robert Hunt. So show me the guard that they've drafted. Lee Meikenberg and, tackle, tackle turned him to a guard. Okay. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And didn't, didn't Chris make, um, Greer address that in the pro post game yes. press? Yes. 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 And, and it's, it's very, you know. I am, as the media member who's most obsessed with offensive line play, particularly the guard, I do find the mocking offensive. And they're, they're, they both do it. Mike McDaniel, and they're both talking to me. And I'm fine with that. But all I'm saying is, if Liam Eikenberg spends another season with half his snaps on the ground, like, like. Um, no, but, but again, as I, as I wrote on Miami Dolphins on that side, where none of the stories are behind the paywall, unlike some other outlets. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Omar. Uh, but but Omar's stuff is worth reading and worth paying whatever you have to pay to get on MiamiHerald.com. So does that, is that better? Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, yes, yes, yes. I don't know that and the Dolphins are free. free. So there you go. Yes, the Dolphins in Death podcast with Omar and Barry Jackson. Yeah. And Isaiah Scott. Sorry, and Isaiah Smalls. My apologies, Isaiah. Um, anyway, as I wrote on Miami Dolphins on SI, uh, I, 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 first of all, I don't know how good the offensive line can be. It's not To me, it's not going to be a top 10 unit. It's not going to sniff top 10. How good does it need to be? It just needs to be decent 
more often than not, again, at the key moments. Like, again, the, this great second-level blocking against Denver was fabulous. Again, it was against Denver, and it was September at home. Let, let's do that in December on the road against a good team. And doesn't have, again, to be to that level. Omar, thoughts or you're getting breaking news on your phone? Uh, call, contacting my boss. You know, oh. when, when you were my boss, I didn't like to leave you waiting. Um, okay. okay, there you go. It's all good. Um, okay, then I'll then I'll keep talking while you do this. Um, no, no, I, no, no. Okay, I do want to address because you and I it might be time for a little bit of Wacom Sockum robots here. You wrote a column this week for the Miami Herald on MiamiHerald.com without giving it all away, but basically suggesting that Mike Mike White signing with the New York with the Buffalo Bills practice squad was very bad news for the Dolphins. Before, okay, well, the floor is all yours before I rebut. Name me the worst team that Mike White could have gone to. Practice squad quarterback, irrelevant. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. Okay. You didn't answer the question. Name me a worse team that Mike White could have gone to with all of Miami secrets. Name me a worse team. With Miami secrets. And this is where, the, okay. Where, where I take issue with it, to answer your question, yes, it's Buffalo. But my, my issue with you is the amount of information that he can provide that will be useful. Mm -hmm. okay. you know, useful for Buffalo in week two. Okay, me, let's, let, can I, let me go. Let me let me respond to that. Okay. Right now, all of their audibles have to change. This is a negotiable. They have to change. Or, the, or, okay. you ever played baseball? Yes, and I hated it, but go ahead, continue. Okay, when you do the third base, the third base coach signals, there was also sometimes a key that would void everything that comes after. You don't think for a millisecond they can come up with a catch word that's going to say, okay, we, we, if we say this, disregard anything that comes after, and then they throw in a fake audible. And Buffalo, supposedly, whether if they depend on what Mike White has told them, all of a sudden they're like, oh, wait, what happened there? Okay. Touche on your point. Touche. But do you think that they're going to change the audibles or are you going to leave them the same? Just the fact that Buffalo has to consider the possibility, again, renders what Mike White can provide right for that particular issue pretty much irrelevant. For, for safety measures. Okay. I want you to answer the question. Oh. Do you, do you think that the Dolphins will be changing all of their audible calls, yes or no? For the Buffalo Bills who they face in 10 days, yes or no? They face him in 13 days, but okay. Um, no, they will not change all of their audible calls. No. Okay, let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move okay. on. All right. What person Go ahead. on the Miami Dolphins coaching staff knows more about okay. Tua Tonga Valoa's tendencies, preferences, likes, dislikes what he's looking for on third downs how he reads the safeties what who knows more of that information outside of his quarterback coach than mike white the person who does his breakdowns for him okay again my question to you I, you're right but again how can this practically apply to where they're going to tell him, okay, this is it's a, this is what he likes to do on third down or whatever. This is what he looks for. When you're when you're defending a play that the Dolphins are running, how is that going to come into play? Where you got Tyree Kill going? And for, first of all, and this is beyond what's already on tape. Like yes. you don't think there's not this tape. Is, yes. and that's my point. This is beyond what's going on tape. Now you intimately know what Tua does not like. You. Intimate, if you're the Buffalo Bills, you have an intimate knowledge of what Tua does not like. I think it's and known already, though. That's my point. And no, that's my no, whole, no, my no, whole no, thing. No, with it. You, don't have, from, you don't have it from the horse's mouth. You have, it on, you have it on tape. It's been there no, for no, no, two no, years. You suspect he doesn't like it. Or you suspect he struggles with it. But 
if they give me this look, I'm going to do this. Okay. Who knows that? Who knows that? Mike here's White another, knows here's, that. Here's another one. Okay. The last was it the both yeah, the last two years. How many how many points did the Dolphins score in the second half against the Bills? Probably seven. <laughs> Correct. In the two I, games. In the two yeah. games, seven points. Does Buffalo really need to have some insider knowledge to know how it to defend? It might be zero points now. It might be zero points is my point. Um, listen, okay, let me let me go another one. Since you, you since ahead. you want to poo-poo those two, okay? No, I I, 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 I like you and I respect I like you and I respect you. I just completely disagree with the premise of your I know, but we're, we're having a conversation. We're having a, okay. this is why okay. we were. We're having a civil conversation. Okay. You and I know the John O. Smith package. We've seen some of it. The fans have not seen all of it. It's preseason, they showed it. They give you a little taste of it for in, in game two to send send a warning shot to the rest of the league. You need to prepare for it. You and I know that they have to prepare for it. Okay. Now, who knows? This is a package that is going to be secretly released to the league in doses, and Mike McDaniel is going to use it to his advantage when he drip needs. By to. Drip. Yeah, drip by drip. Who knows the whole package? Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Mike White. And who is relaying the whole package and drawing it up and explaining it to the Buffalo Bills? Again, but but here's my point again. First of all, how many plays? How many plays do you imagine? For do you think it's a secret for the Buffalo Bills that if Johnu Smith's going to be on the ball, hey, wait a second, chances are they're going to target number one. Number two, how many plays do you think there are in the playbook yeah. for Johnu Smith? Oh, in the playbook? Yeah. Per game or just in the playbook? In the in the playbook. I think there's probably a 50 play package for John o. Smith. Okay. And how I many? Think, how many of the 50, many? 50 plays do you think could could happen against Buffalo? Five. And you have okay. no idea which five. Okay. Do you honestly think Buffalo is going to, like, meticulously study all 50 plays for John all it takes All it takes is one play. You know this league is – this one play decides a game. And it could be that John o. Smith play. It could be any play. So um, give me one second. Yep. And, again, while, while Omar steps away for, for a second here – my whole point on the whole thing is, first of all, is the playbook is this thick, and I'm making a gesture here for those listening on the audio podcast of I don't know how much this is. The playbook is really, really, really thick. What yeah. Buffalo's going to get is, but let, but here's my point. It's a section. It's a section of the playbook, but you know that that is going to take time away, a practice time away from the Buffalo Bills. They're going to have to dedicate at least two periods of time in their short week to prepare for the John o. Smith package. Now, it certainly helped to prepare for the John o. Smith package if you had all the plays or you had a guy who knew all the plays. Now, okay, let's put that to the side, all right? Let's no, put that ahead. to the side. The cheat motion that people call it the cheat motion that Miami does, it's a revolutionized way of playing. It skirts the rules, but it's not illegal. Everybody's trying to replicate it. Everybody's trying to figure it out. It's kind of like the put the tush push. Maybe you could do it, or maybe it's Tyreek that makes it work. You don't know. But you mm. know, you know who knows the intimate secrets of the cheat motion and what two is looking for and when the ball is going to be snapped and when 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 what about Tyreek's stance when he's going into the motion? You know who knows intimate knowledge about the cheat motion? It's on tape. They've done. They, it's on they, tape, they, but you don't, don't know that. Trigger. You don't know what the triggers are. It could be on tape, but you have no idea what the triggers are. You don't no, think no, they, you, don't, you don't think they picked it up on tape? For no, I mean, for they, oh man, okay. There, there is there are certain triggers that Tua's looking for for when he, to snap the ball, and and certain thing. The, it's 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 called a cheat motion for a reason, be, and. Because he's moving personally. forward at the line of scrimmage when he's not supposed to. That's why it's called a cheat mode. Oops, did I say that out loud? They he's got away moving. with a couple last year. Sorry? They, he's not moving. The ball is snapping right at the instance when There were a moving. couple of plays last year. Look at the second Washington touchdown. He was moving forward at the snap. And if they don't call it, it's not a penalty. But that that's why they call it a cheat motion. Otherwise, it's a jet motion. Sorry, go ahead. 
which has been done before. My point is, Mike White knows intimate knowledge about the cheat motion and intimate knowledge of how Tyreek and Tua operate and communicate in the cheat motion. OK, so he's relaying that to the Buffalo Bills. Would it be a factor the entire game, entire season? No. But will it be a factor in one play? And probably. And that one play could make a difference in, in the outcome of a game is my point. OK, so now we put all that information together, put it all together. And I ask you again, who what team? would be the worst possible team for Mike White to have ended up with. It, it'll make a 0.3% difference with Buffalo, and maybe the rest of the team would be 0.1%. How's that? That's my The rest opinion. of the team? Oh, okay. The the yes. I, I, I just I don't buy. And, and this comes up every year. What information can you glean from a player? And the, the, the another issue is if Mike White – inundates them with schematics, hints, tips, and all that, it's going to be information overload. The mm -hmm. Bills have seen what the Dolphins do on tape. Okay. And 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 like I said, again, they didn't have they didn't have a former Dolphin quarterback in their midst the last two years. And they and, didn't struggle and they completely shut him down in the second half. And this was with everybody available. So yeah. Again, I, I, I may, dude, I may be wrong. I from where I sit, it really is not a consequential to me. It was the bigger story was why would the Dolphins not try to bring back Mike White to the practice squad they for their were. own? Sorry, I think they clearly were. I think this is a personal. Come on, Tim Boyle, like for real? Well, no, like that was exactly my point. And, and yeah, yeah, I mean they clearly were. And I think Buffalo. I'm dying to know what Mike White's making as a as a practice squad player because. You know, Buffalo clearly made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And why would they make him an offer he couldn't refuse? Because I think it'll make a difference in that Thursday night game. Well, no, it, the part and of that, that Thursday night game might make a difference in who wins the AFC East. It also could be that Mike White didn't particularly care for the way he was handled. Okay, set up, set up, or handled during training camp because set up. Okay, let me ask you a question: Would you? Would you not say that, by the way, this is with the caveat that Skylar Thompson outplayed Mike White in the preseason. Okay. Would you agree or disagree with the idea that the, the conditions were made more favorable for Skylar than for Mike White throughout the summer? I would agree with that. And I, and I, I and I would argue that maybe some of the conditions weren't fair, but set up. Hmm. Well, that, that, that's what I, I, I'm you sorry, know I'm a guys. conspiracy theorist, and I'm like, I'm, I'm entertaining this setup, and I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, I'm starting the game against Tampa. I finally get my start, and I'm going against Tampa starters. Like, not only that, but Skyler White, uh, Skyler Thompson got a full first half in the preseason opener. Mike White was like, you play the first quarter against the Tampa Bay starters, or most of the first quarter, and then we'll yank you halfway through the second quarter. And then we put Mathos out there at right tackle. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, then to yeah, get smoked uh, on a third down play. Uh, even even if it was, because I always just, I said the whole time, I'm like, yeah, I don't believe this is going to be a competition. Because last year, it was a competition, but it really wasn't a competition. And I didn't think that was fair to Skyler. And then we flipped it and reversed it. And it was a competition, but it really wasn't a competition, but it went the other way. And you're right. That's it, a it, great it, point. It, 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 you know, it, it, but I thought Skyler outperformed him last year, but it wasn't a competition. See, I, see, to me, I thought, I thought they were fairly even, but you, you actually make, you make a very, very good point and hat tip to you there uh, that last year, yeah, the Dolphins had gone out and signed Mike White as an unrestricted free agent. And it was like, there's a reason we went on and got him. That's going to be, this was almost like a boxing match, especially back in the old days where with, if you're the reigning champion, you, the other one better beat you decisively. Well, that was the case. And then this year was like, well, Skyler has shown some progress. He's our draft pick, and we can say 3.5 million, yeah. million off the cap if we dump Mike White. So I, Mike I White had to have massively overperform. I, I think it had more to do with money than performance. Neither neither were impressive in training camp. I think Skyler yeah. showed you the improvisation 
that you need to be to have to win. But I would say this, if if talent level was equal, Mike White could probably execute the offense better than, than Skyler could. But Skyler can make things happen off script plays. And I personally like that quarter. But Mike, you know, Skyler's high and low. Um, he, he, he's got that Matt Moore thing to him. Now, is he as polished as Matt? No. But and Mike White is just, eh, just you know, just, correct. So, you know, props to Skyler for Skyler won it. There's no argument there. Skyler won it. Mike White can't even argue that Skyler won it because we're watching the daily stuff. And even though it wasn't even fair, Mike didn't do nothing. There was like one day he had a good day. Um, and this isn't just think about it. This isn't just what we've seen. Remember, they had there were days where Tua was not practicing. Tua was not doing 11 on 11s. And realistically, the team made a strategic decision. You know what? We don't need to see 11 on 11s. Let's do seven on sevens more because two, we actually get to see Tua. And Mike is not doing nothing over here. And Skyler is not doing nothing over here. So they had seen far more than we got to see. And what we saw was, eh, it's mediocre. Completely agree. Completely agree. Uh, final thought before we wrap it up. Uh, I don't know if we will get to do this again before the start of the regular season. So as we head into the regular season, 2024, would you care to make a prediction on the record or just you share your overall thoughts on your level of confidence on this team? Um, I think they're a 10 win team. I think they're a double digit team. Can I predict that they'll win the AFC East? No. I don't know how good Aaron Rodgers is going to be. I don't know whether or not Josh Allen is going to find some weapons or magically say Stefan Diggs, who cares? I, I got this. Um, and so I, I, but I know that they're a talented team. I, I like a lot of the talent that's there. Um, I think they should have a top five offense. I have more of a concern about the defense than I do of the offense. Um, but so 10 wins, I don't know if I can predict playoffs. I damn sure I'm not willing to predict AFC East champions. Um, I'm damn sure not willing to predict a playoff win because I have no idea who they face in the first round. If they face Pittsburgh, okay, I can give you a playoff win. If they face Tennessee, okay, I can give you a playoff win. If they face Baltimore or 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 Kansas City, nah, I can't give you a playoff win. They haven't proven that. And then also, I don't know who throughout the league is going to get injured. Hell, we can have Aaron Rodgers injured for a second straight season. Mm -hmm. Or it, who on the Dolphins could get injured? One with block, we might be done with two after four games. I don't know. Um, so that that's that's why they play the game. Um, but I do expect my expectations are 10 wins for this team. Okay. Um, if they get to more than that, then goodness gracious. They 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 I remember when in December we thought they were like Super Bowl contenders, maybe not you, we, me. And then the wheels fell off. I had them in that category too. Um, going into the Buffalo Bill, going into the Baltimore game, mm -hmm. like that game was that game might have been the biggest in the NFL. It was a showdown for who's going to be the AFC's number one seed, and yep. the Baltimore Ravens pimp slapped them, and and showed you you're not in our weight class, and that's what Miami's had to have done the last year. They had to get into that weight class. Do I feel like they did it? I don't. Um, too many holes on defense. Too many questions on the offensive line. Right now, wide receiver unit, it's not been upgraded, despite what you want to say. Um, yeah, you upgraded tight end, but what, 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 what? Yeah, who, who ever said the wide receiver unit was upgraded? I mean, oh, so one, when, when OB, well, when OBJ steps on the field, then sure, but. Uh, yeah, if, if he even looks like himself, like everybody's like, oh, these rookie receivers are going to be better than anything everybody's ever had. Um, those guys are, I, um, you know, Eric Uzakama, you know, is he going to step his game up? Guys on practice squad. Like, they, they, the Dolphins were uh, so desperate at wide receiver, and you know I love them. They said, damn, we need to sign Chosen back. And I can't argue against it. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually a smart move for where you are. Like, People are downplaying the fact that Tyreek hasn't caught a ball in like 10 days. Um, there's a reason for that. Like Tyreek runs routes. Nobody throws balls to him. There's a reason for that. Um, how serious is that reason? Might lead to a drop or two per game. 
Um, you got Jalen Waddle in a red jersey. Is our you know what red jerseys mean? That that means uh oh, like yeah, let's don't not touch. don't touch. Yeah, do not touch. Like that's not good. So I'm concerned. I'm concerned, and magically, I'm sure they're going to be all healthy and magically, magically, you know, even Aaron Brewer magically make it to the season opener. But how much longer are they going to last? Like if Waddle, let's say this is a, and I'm speculating here. Let's say this is a hamstring or calf injury on Waddle. Is it going to get better or worse as the season progresses? If it never fully heals, yes, you know it's going to get worse. If, if it never fully heals. Do you think it's going to fully heal? He's wearing a red jersey I uh, eight days before the season opener. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not ready to predict doom and gloom for his. You know, well, you know I'm not doom and gloom. I'm just no, glass I'm, half empty. No, I'm <laughs> doom and gloom. Yeah, that's I, kind I know of, who I am. Yeah, yes, you do. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm kind of with you. It, to me, uh, to me, it's like a same kind of the same old, same old. As I look at this team, uh, there's still a finesse team that's going to look absolutely yes. awesome at times. But push comes to shove down the stretch. I don't know that they've done anything significant enough to get themselves over the hump. It could be that they completely avoid injuries or mostly avoid injuries and down the stretch. They're the team that's in the better physical condition than the opponent. And maybe they can get a couple more plays here or there. But um, I, I, I just don't know that I can confidently say that it's a different team that's ready to take the next level. Uh, the one thing I will say from a different standpoint, I see a difference in leadership. I see a difference in accountability, players holding each other accountable. I see a difference in the bond that they have as a team. You're like, no, nope, no, that wasn't there last year. Dude, you kept telling me last year how you'd never seen a team like so good together. So uh, holding each other accountable. It's, it's, I, mean, I think, I, but I think the volume has been turned up on that. I do. Look, look at Tua. Look at Tua. Look at look at Tua. Look well, at Tua's Tua. Been empowered by the by the new contract, but I, exactly. He's, so, he's still not. He's to me. To me, still wouldn't be one of the main leaders on the team. You know, it's like, acting like the alpha though. When has Tua acted like the alpha? Never. No, no. Now no, he's, he's, never had, he's never had a contract extension before. Yes. Now he's the alpha. But you're saying Arrow is still status quo. No, Tua's the alpha. Tua's calling people out. Like when I'm, saying, seen- I'm saying in terms of a team that holds itself accountable and then the good camaraderie and all that, again, this is what we were saying last year. I, I don't know that. So, so, again, to me, this is kind of the same team, which is good in a sense because we know, we know that they're, they're more than likely going to be good. The question is, are they going to be good enough to get to that next level? Yeah. So that'll be the question. And we'll start finding out the answers Sunday, September 8th against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So for now, I want to thank – I'm not going to use Boo again. We've done that. We've beaten that to death. But oh, uh, former former All Dolphins podcast co-host, now columnist for the Miami Herald and co-host of the Dolphins in Depth podcast for the Miami Herald, Omar Kelly. Thank you very much. And please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And that will wrap it up. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys later. All right.